Hello and welcome once again to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Holler thanking you as always for taking the time to observe this video. And also to those that have subscribed, viewed, commented, and responded. Today's topic, ladies and gentlemen, the biblical discernment of God's miracles today. Now this a study is because of what I'm experiencing or actually seeing for myself, what is out there and what it is people believe in today's miracles and how they respond to what's happening, especially in the realm of religion, to include Christianity. That's why I think it's vital to have a study like this to show from the biblical standpoint the truth about God's miracles. Now, if you listen carefully to the title of the video, you will find I said the biblical discernment of God's miracles today. So it's a biblical discernment of God's miracles today now. When we look at the Bible, there's no controversy in the fact that God has done many miracles in Scripture. Again, let me repeat that. There is no controversy in the fact that God has exhibited and performed many, many miracles especially in the Old Testament, and then when Jesus Christ was on this earth in the form of a man, also performed 37 miracles that are recorded in Scripture. So you can't deny that fact, and I'm not out here to do that at all. But what I want you to understand and look at, and I encourage you to, the miracles that were performed in Scripture from the Old Testament, through Jesus Christ's earthly ministry, which is the gospel of the kingdom. And even after his death, burial, and resurrection, up until the big change in the button of the cross, in the times past, under the law, there was many, many miracles. But they were 100% physical miracles that mankind could see, experience, and it was proof positive, if you will, that this was a bona fide miracle performed by God. And again, it's recorded in Scripture for truth. So with that being said, you find today that needs to be challenged. Now, the big key word here is today, because we are in, ladies and gentlemen, something called the dispensation of the grace of God. We are in the but now of the cross as I have explained in many different uh, videos and showed you from Scripture, the difference between the times past, which was Jesus Christ's earthly ministry, under the law, and all the Old Testament writings from Genesis through Malachi. And then the but now is the writings of Paul, the apostle, from Romans through Philemon. And then there's ages to come, which is the books of Hebrews, through Revelation. Now we are in the but now of the cross at this age and at this time, so we have to use the Bible as a discernment for God's word to see whether or not the miracles happening today that people proclaim that are miracles and that Christianity and religions proclaim are miracles, are they truly a miracle of God today? And that's what we're going to look at. Because you will find, ladies and gentlemen, many ministries out there that proclaim to have healing ministries or miracle ministries, and they perform these at various times and various places, and they a lot of times charge for their services or they'll pass the hat however they want to justify the means that they're getting paid for what they're doing uh, to perform these miracles. And again, these are 100%, ladies and gentlemen, physical miracles, which people come to see because they want to experience for themselves so that they can believe what it is they saw because they're looking with their eyes. See, they're not walking by faith here. They're walking by sight. And they fall for a lot of this. And you see this a lot on social media. Uh, and you'll see, and it, I always question certain things because there's a lot of people that profess to be Christians, and I can understand that, and they're under the realm of Christianity, which makes total sense that they will post uh, things from ministries that people have founded and developed over a time. Uh, and they will say some of the most ridiculous things. Like if you affirm that, God is good and you believe in, in uh, his faithful guidance, you'll have a reward within two weeks. Or you might find something where it says, the angels are praying for you and looking over you and within two days you'll have a miracle. 
or one might say if you pray this prayer and they'll say a few words the phone will ring within three days and you'll have this miracle or money is on your way if you affirm and believe and say yes that you believe in god that's just some of the many many ones that are out there they're quite ridiculous ladies and gentlemen because none of them are biblical to start with but you find people reposting or sharing these uh postings and putting them on the facebook page and then they're always affirming they'll do what the thing or the post told them to do whether it's an amen or whether it's affirmation with yes or whatever they need to respond to get this quote miracle to happen for them and it's sad because i see a lot of people that i know respond to these and post these and go right along with them now, is that a miracle of God today? Absolutely not. Okay, let's get this straight from the get-go here because you have to understand the miracles that Jesus Christ performed on his earthly ministry and the miracles performed from Malachi back onto the book of Genesis are all in the times past. That was all a formation of physical miracles that people needed to see in order to believe. And that's how God operated with these people in the times past he deals with people in the dispensation of the grace of god in a different way today from the but now the cross until the age of grace is finished and the church the body of christ church is taken out of the way now it's amazing because you have a lot of times in uh just in society in general and civil, civilization you'll have people that will come down with something of a physical entity that looks bad it might be terminal even and for what uh, no apparent reason they are cured of this uh, infirmity that was dwelling within them. Some of them may attribute it, if they're religious, they'll attribute it to their religion, to their faith. And they'll say it's a miracle of God. Then you have, on the other hand, scientists, doctors, and, and experts that have no plausible physical uh reason to explain why the phenomenon happened it goes on explained and they will sometimes refer to it as a miracle of un not understanding uh, everything about it and that has happened in it i'm not saying it's not happened but again the majority of people will equate this with the miracle of god see whether and again these are 99.999 percent of the time physical now is this a miracle of god and a lot of people claim that it is especially christians of christianity they will post things like oh god is good when they hear something happen that they've been praying for see they they think their faith and their prayers are answered by god because they pray to god because their christianity tells them to as christians and god will answer their prayer but sometimes he doesn't answer their prayers but they rationalize that up and by saying well god will answer the prayers in his time because it's his will and that's biblical to say that but is it a miracle of God when he chooses to heal somebody physically today? Now, if you look at Scripture, and if you're a student of the Word of God, you'll understand. But for those that don't, or just don't have the interest, or don't take the time, whatever they have for a bona fide excuse, if you want to call it that, not to study the Word of God, they will go along with pretty much everything that social society tells them to, especially if they belong to a religion. They will go along with what their religion teaches them to do. And they're very uh, obedient to that, especially when you see Christians, when they post these kind of videos, or not videos, but they'll post postings about certain things that can happen. It will be a miracle of God if they just say, affirm yes or an amen or whatever the case might be. And you see it every day. Now, what if one of these comes true? What do you think this person will do? Well, they will absolutely affirm and say, Oh, God is good, you know. God came through with a miracle just as he promised. But the sad thing about that is it may draw the person to follow that particular ministry, if you will, or whatever the, the uh, group is that promotes this kind of rubbish, if you will, to get them sucked into following them and donating money. And the bottom line, there's, they're out there to actually make a profit. Don't tell me they aren't. Or they're out there for notoriety of one thing or another. Because I can tell you from Scripture, and we'll let Scripture show you that that is not a bona fide miracle of God from Scripture, regardless of what happens. Now, how can I sit here and say that when the Bible is full of the physical miracles that God, in the 
Spirit performed from Genesis to Malachi, and in the flesh performed 37 miracles noted to mankind. And when you read the book of Acts, there's physical miracles also happening by the 12 apostles, to include Paul. But you have to remember the book of Acts is just that. It's a book of the act of what the apostles did. It is not a book for doctrine of any kind. It is predominantly the first half written under the law. The second half is of Paul's ministry, which is under grace. And that's where the discernment of God's miracles today comes into play. Because if you read the Bible and you read Genesis through half of the book of Acts, you'll find the miracles that God promoted or God performed in the spirit and also in the flesh as Jesus Christ when he walked on this earth. There was a lot of physical miracles done to get them to believe because it started out with the, his nation of Israel the Jews were people that needed miracle signs and wonders in order to believe. And then they were going to go out and teach and convert the rest of the world under the gospel of the kingdom. And they had given powers to perform physical miracles. Again, you can't get away from the physicality of the miracles here. Now, in today's modern times, if you will, or in the but now of the cross, which is over 2,000 years now, it's different. It is the age of grace. Law is no longer in effect. All those physical miracles were under the law. Today, we're not under the law. We're under grace. Law has no effect to us. We are not under the yoke of bondage any longer. We're under something called grace. Now, grace is something that is a miracle in itself, but it is a gift from God, and you cannot see it. And that should give you a clue to what we're looking for in the miracles of God today to be able to discern them from the biblical standpoint. I can sit here and tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, without reservation and using Scripture as my source of truth, which is God's Word, God does not perform physical miracles in the dispensation of the grace of God today. He does not. That might come to a shock to a lot of you people. And yet the Bible says, in all things, giving him thanks. And people will give him thanks for these physical miracles that they think he's performing today. Does he actually hear and accept those thanks? That's in question. Because if God today is not performing physical miracles, which the Bible says he is not, when you rightly divide the word of truth, and you study the word of truth the way Jesus Christ commands you to, and you divide scripture the way Jesus Christ did at the cross from the times past about now and the ages to come, you will see where all the physical miracles were recorded and performed in the times past. And you will see physical miracles being performed that are mentioned that are going to be performed in the ages to come. However, in the body of Christ doctrine from Romans to Philemon, what Paul gives to you and me in the dispensation of the grace of God, which is referred to as a revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, where grace is poured out at the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ, there is no mention of physical miracles ever. Now I want you to take and encourage you to look and read Romans through Philemon, the 13 books of the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, which is a doctrine for the body of Christ church under grace by faith. The miracle that God performs today is not of the physical entity, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, Jesus Christ performs this miracle every day, and he only performs one miracle. Now, in this dispensation of the grace of God, in the button of the cross, under grace, he only performs one miracle. That's a miracle you can't see. It's not of the physical nature. It is of the spirit. He saves people. Every day, he saves and makes their spirit alive, something they can't see, they can't experience. They can't look for it. All they have to do is believe. Once they believe, that's the prayer answered by Jesus Christ. That's when the miracle happens. That is the only miracle, ladies and gentlemen, that my great God and Savior Jesus Christ performs in this age of grace. There is no other miracles needed. And how do you know that? Well, if you look at Paul, 
when Paul presented this message of the dispensation of the grace of God, or the gospel of the grace of God, as he called it, it's also the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, when he read and then he wrote about all this, he mentions one place where he prayed to God to take away a physicality infirmity that would be a miracle of the flesh if he did, if Jesus Christ answered his prayers for him to remove this thorn in the flesh of Paul's. Well, he didn't do it. He just turned around and told Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. And Paul knew he was saved by grace through faith. That's a miracle that saved Paul. Paul didn't need any more miracles from Jesus Christ in order to have salvation, eternal life. You see, that's where Christianity, religious, mankind today, and the flesh make their big mistake. They think the miracles that are physical are of God because that way they know God exists, God's in their life, and God is working for them, and they're going to end up in heaven. Well, that has nothing to do with salvation at all. It has nothing to do with the position of the people if they're in the body of Christ church. It has nothing to do with whether they walk with God or if they're a child of God. It has nothing to do with it. It's a ploy from someone else. You can deny this if you want. But you're going to find out in Scripture, when you read correctly and study the Word of God correctly, the way Jesus Christ commands you to, and Paul told you how in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. And then he says in chapter 2, verse 7, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, those of us that are saved by grace through faith, in the dispensation of the grace of God, which is the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ, in the revelation of the mystery that we become saints, and we are members of the body of Christ church, is just by believing. And see, then when we believe, God gives us over to repentance, to acknowledging other truths. We are able to take ourselves out of the snare of the devil. Our minds are opened and cleared, and we're not blinded anymore. And we accept the free gifts of God. And the free gift is eternal life. That is the miracle that Jesus Christ performs today. And that's the only miracle needed in the body of Christ, church. The physicality of things mean nothing. Because if the physicality of things meant something, they would be mentioned in the body of Christ, church doctrine. They would be presented by Paul. And he would show them this needs to be happened. Now, if you're uh, clever enough and you understand or you study scripture, you'll find when you rightly divide the word of truth, yes, the miracles that Jesus Christ did in his earthly ministry were of the physical nature. And he had people perform some of these after he was gone. Even when John writes in his one of his epistles how you heal the sick by laying on of hands and anointing oil and praying over them. How many Christians today do that? A lot of them. Denominations do it. Because they believe it's in the Bible. See, they're going to believe what's in the Bible. They're not going to rightly divide the word of truth and study it the way they, God, Jesus Christ commands them to. No, they're going to study it the way their Christianity tells them to do it. And they're going to mix it all together. And they're going to find out, well, it's not happening. How come it doesn't happen? You see, that's the difference. And to biblically discern God's miracles day, all you have to do is line it up with Scripture. Because anything that happens today in a physicality, form that people run and proclaim to the world it's a miracle of god you stop you open your bible and you look at today's dispensation of the grace of god from romans through philemon see if you can find where anything like that that was occurred today happened back then or was ever mentioned that it was going to you won't find anything because it's all of the spirit ladies and gentlemen that's the only miracle jesus christ has to perform and does perform every day. But he's not thanked very much for it, is he? How many people post on there, my prayer is that people find salvation today through Jesus Christ. This, the spiritual healing of their spirit that is dead to be made alive in Christ. Now that's a prayer, I, like I did a whole video on, that's a prayer Jesus Christ is going to answer 100% of the time. If it's said in earnest, it's just like the miracle that he performs under grace that he poured out on his cross for us today. All we have to do is believe and that miracle happens. We have eternal life. 
Because Paul realized once he was told that, that Jesus Christ's grace was sufficient for them, what did he do with that infirmity? Well, he stopped praying to get rid of it, didn't he? He glorified in it to Jesus Christ. He glorified in his afflictions, his infirmities, his tribulations, everything that was thrown at him that caused him to suffer physically, he rejoiced in. And there is a verse in Romans, I think a lot of people don't want to look at when they're thinking about miracles that they clamor from God today. But let's just open our books to the, uh, the Bible, to the book of Romans, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the book of uh, Romans. As soon as I can get there, I'll... And it's in, I believe it's chapter 8, let's go to. It's the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 18, and this is what it says. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So the suffering that you do today. But he never talks about taking the sufferings away. See, that's the key of understanding it from a biblical standpoint, the discernment of God's miracles today. They're all spiritual. There's nothing God does in the physicality of miracles. If anybody sees a physical miracle and they claim it as a physical miracle because there's no basis for understanding it from a physical or a scientific means, they're going to make it out to be a miracle. And then people will run to say it's a miracle of God. Be careful when you do that because there's somebody lying in wait to deceive you. It's not a miracle of God if it's physical today. It is a pseudo-miracle of the leader of Christianity. His name is Satan. That is the one that can perform these miracles or make them out to look like a miracle of God. But it's a miracle of God with a small g. But let's just go to um, 2 Corinthians, ladies and gentlemen. I want to show you what Paul said when he was told it's not going to happen to take that physical suffering away from you. And that's what you'll find in chapter 12. Because this is what happened. We'll start in verse 7. Paul says, And I, and last I should be exalted above measure, though the abundance of the revelations, there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, buffeted me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now it's very important. Did you hear what I read? That it said it was a what? A messenger to buffet me from who? Satan. Satan caused that. Would God cure a physical entity that Satan created? Good question. Let's look at it and find out. Let's see verse 8. For this thing I besought, Lord, thrice, three times, that it might depart from me. And look what the Lord told him in verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. More gladly, therefore, Paul says, I will rather glory in my infirmities with the power of Christ may rest upon me. And then he says in verse 10, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. How many of you Christians would do that? How many of you promote that? How many of you Christians go to a Christian church in the realm of Christianity that teach that from the pulpit? No, you're not going to do that. You're going to get up and you're going to stand around, put your hands together, grab hold of each other, put somebody in the middle of you, and everybody's going to put their hand on them, and they're going to pray for this person to have that physical entity removed. When God, Jesus Christ's grace is sufficient for all, but not all believe, see. That's the miracle that is happening today. And that is the only miracle from Scripture that is happening today, ladies and gentlemen. The grace of Jesus Christ for salvation through faith. That's the only one that you should stand up when somebody is saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ and holler and scream and affirm unto this world 
the glory of God in his miracle of Jesus Christ. That's what needs to be proclaimed. That's what needs to be prayed for. You can do what you want with the rest, and you can do what you want with this video and call it all a bunch of baloney. But if you go on in your lifetime and you're telling people, God has been good to me, God has been in my life, he's performed many miracles that I know are from God. If you say you know the miracles from God, how do you back up what it is you just said? Through your religion, through your Christianity, through your fellow Christians? Because, ladies and gentlemen, you can't back it up with this book. Not today. That's the key. Not today you can't. You can tell all about the miracles in the times past, under the law, from Genesis through the first half of the book of Acts. Yes, indeed. Then you can jump to Hebrews. And where do you find? You find them in the book of Revelation, miracles again. But you don't find miracles from Romans through Philemon. Why? You don't find physical miracles, I should say, from Romans through Philemon. Why? Because there is no physical miracles happening today. If it happens today, you know that you don't need to give God the glory and you sure don't want to give Satan the glory. If you think it's a miracle, keep it to yourself. Just tell yourself, I'm glad it's over. We're glad that it's done. You don't have to make a public uh, spectacle of yourself or of your church or of your Christianity or being a Christian saying, it's a miracle of God. God is good. God will not even recognize that. And it's sure, as I'm sitting here talking to you, it's not a miracle of God today. And I know churches, denominations, have proclaimed miracles of God. When they edify people and they, they make them into saints and all this kind of goofy stuff that's within their doctrine uh, of their Christianity religions. They, it, it's sad to see because people long for miracles of the physical nature because people are basically selfish. We all are. If you're not, you're denying yourself and you're not being truthful to yourself or anybody else. Everybody wants to be feeling good. They don't want to have physical infirmities. But how many of you out there are willing to actually, when something bad is happening to you or a loved one, that doesn't look good to get on your knees or however you want to pray in secret, by the way. Don't go to your local church and ask a thousand people to pray for them. You notice it doesn't say that in Scripture anywhere from Romans through Philemon that that's what you should be doing. But Christianity does that anyway. But you pray that you will glory in the infirmity that your loved one is suffering or that you're suffering. And you'd be glad you have it. Because you know that you have the grace of Jesus Christ in you, which is sufficient for your salvation. And the rest will take care of itself. That's the thing people lack in their Christian religion as Christians of Christianity, in their denomination, their churches. So they don't believe that. They have to participate in order to bring the miracle of God to them, see, and they think they are also doing that when salvation happens because of all the things that they do. And that's the dangers of trying to just on a whim saying it's a miracle of God today. It's not a miracle of God today. Ladies and gentlemen, I just showed you from Scripture. And I want you to take and look it up yourself. Don't take my word for nothing. Read Romans through Philemon and then document every physical absolute miracle that was performed by Paul, in Romans through Philemon now. You leave the book of Acts alone. That's not part of the doctrine for the body of Christ church because it was never mentioned. The body of Christ church doctrine is Romans through Philemon. You show me the miracle, the physical miracles of Jesus Christ that were performed by another human being or that it was experienced by another human being. And I'll change my ways. But I stand for the truth of the Word of God according to the Word of God. And that gives us the positive, with no controversy, the discernment, the ability to be able to tell what is the truth of the Word of God, what is a true miracle of God today, and what is not a miracle of God today. 
And let me reinstate this, ladies and gentlemen. From the Bible, God today, Jesus Christ, my great God and Savior, is not performing any type of physical miracles today. Because it, what would it purpose would it serve if it was those miracles being performed in a world that is cursed, a world that is full of sin, and a world that is doomed to be destroyed? What good would the miracles do? Anybody. But draw them to a false god. It will draw them further away from Jesus Christ of the Spirit today. See, it will draw them to the physicality of Satan and his religion of Christianity. That's what it's doing. And you don't even realize it. Because you're too busy glorifying God in your finite mind and finite wisdom with your false religion called Christianity that isn't even of the Bible. And you're a Christian. And you want to proclaim and tell everybody that you are. And that God is good in his miracles he's performed in your lives or of people that you know who are bona fide miracle of God. Yet you cannot back any of them up from Scripture today, which is from Romans to Philemon, the but now of the cross. You can be set free and understand this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and you can practice this and you can be absolutely sure that you know exactly what is a miracle of God today and what is not. Simply by studying his word. But you have to be freed. Your mind has to be on, not blinded. Jesus Christ has to shine his light into you. And God has to give you over to repentance and come to the truth. So you can acknowledge the, uh, the truth. He has to give you that repentance and able to do that. So you can recover yourself out of the snare of the devil. And the only way you can do that is to believe the gospel. What gospel is that? It is presented, by the way, in the body of Christ doctrine from Romans to Philemon. In the spirit, it says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received and were, and you stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that what was preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I live it first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. All you have to do is believe that by faith. And it is a grace that's poured out in the miracle of Jesus Christ, in the spirit that saves your spirit. And you are made alive in Christ Jesus and you will be alive forever through the salvation of Jesus Christ. Because it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, yet not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. Physical things are always of works. That doesn't happen today, ladies and gentlemen. And anybody that goes around proclaiming that they witnessed or they know of a miracle of God are false teachers, false believers, false proclaimers, because they cannot show you from Scripture the discernment of the truth of the Word of God, which are the miracles that God performs today. They will show you all the miracles of the times past. They will show you all the miracles in the ages to come, they cannot show you one miracle of the physicality of nature from Romans through Philemon. And that, ladies and gentlemen, should prove once and for all the miracles of God today are of the spirit, not of the flesh. Because you can read Romans through Philemon, and if you believe what it is you read, and you believe what Paul said, consider what I say in the Lord, give the understanding in all things once you're saved by grace through faith, you will clearly see Understand and accept the free gifts of God, which are of the Spirit, not of the flesh. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you listening. This is a home Bible study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Holler thanking you. And always remember, until next time. <laughs>